What's up? My name is Sawyer. This is my YouTube channel, and hi. So it's been a little bit since I've done a like a sit down video and just where I'm talking to you guys. My past few videos have been like vlogs where I'm moving around a lot and doing stuff, and I figured it'd be cool to just chill out with all of you peoples and just talk to you for a little bit. It's also been a second since I've done a story time. I've been thinking a lot lately because it's been about a year since the last time I had any problems with this. So this is the time about how I got put in the hospital. And I know this is a little bit of a different topic um, or a little style of video because I don't really talk about a bunch of serious stuff on my channel. Um, and I'm not going to be all like all sad about it. I might seem like I'm happy. Um, it was a kind of a rough time in my life, but I'm proud to say that uh, my family and God has got me through a lot of stuff. And <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm glad to talk about it. And I'm just going to tell you a story. So, so <laughs> to get started for a while like for probably for the past like six or seven years I can remember feeling certain little pains like in my chest or whatever and I would tell my mom about it and I would just like assume think that it was gas and um most of it probably was <laughs> uh that's not really too weird to talk about but I mean you know like <laughs> if you got if you got gas it's gonna hurt a little bit that's a very important thing I guess for the story but yeah so um Flash forward to February 5th of 2016. So, um, I'm at school. There's this huge youth event that night, um, and all my friends go. It's like, like uh, they have concerts, and they have just a bunch of cool events and stuff. And so, um, everybody's excited. Everybody's talking about it in school, because that night we get to go home and pack and then leave, and we stay for the whole weekend. Or so I thought. <laughs> so we, I'm talking to all my friends, getting excited about the event, talking about the concert people that are gonna be there. And it's really, it's really crazy because I live in like a, I live in a very small town and um, not very many people come here, but you know, there's a rapper that's actually blowing up right now. Uh, his name is NF. I know a lot of you probably know who he is, but he was actually coming to my little town for this little event and I did meet him. <sighs> well, I was going to try to find that hat, but um, he wasn't allowing pictures to be made, but he did sign an autograph for me. It's on a hat. It's on an NF hat, but I... I don't know where it's at right now. So yeah, everybody was all excited because it's a big deal for my little town. I'm in school. Um, I want to say I was in Spanish class the first time I remember it, but I felt this pain in my chest area. Like, and I was like, Ugh. my Bluetooth speaker just turned off. Love that. Oh God, thank you, Sophia. Sophia keeps talking like James Charles. Is it's it's driving me crazy, and now I'm now I'm doing it too. Thanks, so. So I feel this weird pain, and I am like, okay, so maybe it'll go away. Well, the bell rings, and the school day is over, and my friend Jacob uh, couldn't drive at the time, but I could because I was 16 and he wasn't quite 16 yet. He didn't know. It was like a, a whatever. He said, hey, Sawyer, uh, can you take me to my house, like drive me to my house because I don't have a ride from home from school today. And I said, yeah, sure, um, as long as you carry my book bag because my 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 chest is hurting and I don't know why and he kind of just like didn't really <laughs> think about it because he was like oh come on just suck it up and he was like I'm not carrying your bag for you I still joke with him to this day about it <laughs> so I get in my truck and I drive him to his house because he lives kind of close to me and then I get home and I'm talking to my mom about it I'm like yeah I think I just have uh gas again or whatever and it, I, I think it'll just go away she makes sure I'm okay because uh, she asked me if I still want to go to the event. I'm like, of course I do. Like, why would I not want to? I'm just having a little gas. I'm going to fart and it'll go away. So I get to the event. Everybody's excited. The concert goes on. Like, he, NF performs. Um, and if you're at the concert, I'm thinking, wow, my chest, like, really hurts. This is actually not, not normal. Um, I don't really quite understand what's going on but i kind of just like push past it because i'm like yo this nf's right in front of me i'm just gonna listen to the concert i'm gonna enjoy myself and it'll be okay so i get uh done with the concert the show's over we go uh meet him after because he does his little meet thing after the show that i was at so i would go back to this host home that i'm at that everybody goes to somebody else's house but as, like in groups so i was in like a, an age group of people and so um I noticed that the pain is getting like a lot worse so 
I'm sitting in a chair with my back pressed up against the chair at, a, at, a, at like a table. Everybody else is behind me and they're all talking and doing stuff that like you would normally do at like a big event like this. I'm sitting here with my back pressed up against a chair because that's like the only way like I noticed that I was like relieving the pain a little bit. I'm texting my mom and I'm like, okay, mom, what am I supposed to do? Um, because I literally can't move off of this chair because like it'll, it hurts too bad. And she texts me and she's like, here, just take some Tums um, because I packed you some because here we are still thinking that it's gas. So I took some, so I'm sitting here and it's been like a couple hours at this point. Um, so I text my mom again and I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Um, this is not normal and the pain is still there. I still can't move out of the chair because I'm pressing that I'd like to put pressure on my back because it's like from like here like back I get to so I get like really dizzy like all of a sudden like boom it's like whoa like really dizzy and I'm like okay so I get up and I walk outside and I'm, I'm texting my mom and then I was like okay no I can't I have to call her because I can tell something's really wrong so I, I call my mom and it's actually it's pretty late it's like 12 o'clock at night which is not normal uh, for me to just randomly call my mom at 12 if I'm at, at an event or something so I call her and I'm like look mom well, I don't say that. <laughs> I call her and I'm like, hey, mom, um, I don't feel good. I don't understand what's going on. Uh, can you come get me, please? And then I get off the phone with her and she's on the way. Because we weren't allowed to drive ourselves, it was like a everybody, like, <laughs> you pretty much just, like, you can't drive yourself. So she has to come and she's on the way and come and get me. And I literally feel like I'm about to pass out. So I just sit down on this porch at this host home and I'm like, and then just like breathing and I'm like trying to figure out what it is and it's kind of cold outside and it felt like that the cold was like helping me feel better like it helped me not pass out I guess and so um, my mom gets there I didn't I kind of felt bad because I, I kind of just up and left without telling my group leader or the the owner of the house I was at I didn't tell him I was leaving but um, they found out eventually um, I'm in the car with my mom and she's like well what do you want to do do you want to go to the hospital or do you want to like just go home and go to bed and I was like yeah I kind of just want to go home and go to bed um because that's what I wanted to do I was like really tired and I didn't really feel good I felt like I was going to get sick we get home and I'm talking to my mom at this point I I, I slept in the bed with my mom because she wanted to keep an eye on me because it was something really weird and so um apparently we went to bed and then apparently she like she tells me that I woke up at three o'clock and I sit straight up in the bed and I'm like mom we have to go to the hospital now and then she says that I passed out right there and just fell back and she, and then I, I remember waking up in the bed next to her and she's like, are you okay? What, what, what's going on? Like, why did, like, what, what just happened? And I'm sitting here and I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm going to get up and like go to the bathroom because I feel like I'm going to get sick. And at this point, uh, my sister Caitlin lived with us and she was upstairs asleep. So I'm, I'm pretty sure at this point she already called 911 to get the ambulance, but I don't remember if she called them quite yet. I, I think she did, but I don't quite remember. I get up and I'm going to the bathroom because I feel like I'm going to get sick. And then the next thing I know, I wake up on the floor, which is really crazy because <laughs> I was just like, anyways. So my mom, I wake up and I'm on the floor and my mom and my sister are like looking at me like trying to like shake me awake and like make sure I'm okay like hello like are you okay and so I almost felt like better like nothing was wrong at this point they're they're both freaking out at this point so my mom is telling Caitlin that uh the ambulance is on the way and they're telling me that so I get up and I put my own shoes on and I'm like okay the, 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 what's going on and then the ambulance finally gets there to my house and it has been a little bit it's been like probably 15 minutes it might not have even been that long it just felt forever so i get up and i walk out to the ambulance once they get there and the ambulance lady literally is like who are we going to pick up and my mom is like him because i like i'm literally i look fine i'm just getting up and i'm walking by myself to the ambulance which is weird they take me in the ambulance and they're doing all these little I don't want to say IV things because I don't think it was an IV yet, but they're like running tests on me in the ambulance and we're just sitting in my driveway. And I can remember thinking, wow, what is, what is going on? I don't understand. It was really weird because at this point I had never been in the hospital before um, and I, I didn't know what was going on. And I had never even ridden in an ambulance before because of how old I was. They wouldn't let my mom ride with me, which was kind of scary too. I was, I was 16, but still I was scared. So it probably helped a little bit to have my mom or somebody with me, but they wouldn't let anybody else in the ambulance with me. They took good care of me. So we got to this smaller hospital, but it's the closest one. So we get there. I'm in this little back room 
the nurse comes in and she's like, wait, is his, are his lips normally that white? Because apparently, according to everybody else, I had lost all color in my face and my lips were like really white. They're, they're normally really dark, obviously, but um, I, they used to be a lot darker. Like I literally used to get picked on in school because I everybody said I wore lipstick. That's how dark and red my lips were. So my mom's like, no, like, <laughs> so she, she, she goes and gets the doctor and then he's like, okay, so we need to take an x-ray because obviously you're losing blood somewhere. And in my head, I'm like, wait, what? So um, I go with my mom to take an x-ray with this nurse or doctor. I can't quite remember. I think it was a nurse. But it, so we take it and I had to stand up and I have to like take a deep breath and hold my arms up for the way they want. Literally, it was like, mom, I'm about to pass out because I got really lightheaded again. So I had to sit down in this wheelchair beside me. I couldn't stand up long enough for them to take the... Uh, the x-ray and so we finally figured it out we got it we got the x-ray taken and then we get back and the doctor comes back and tells us that my lung has collapsed and is full of something and at this point he thinks that it's pneumonia like, a, like a, my lung is full of something and he thinks it's pneumonia and I'm like great so um, the next thing they tell me was very 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 scary um, <laughs> they take me in this room and this doctor it's just me and the doctor and he's like look we're going to put this tube in your side, but we're not gonna put you to sleep. We're gonna numb it, yes, but we're not gonna put you to sleep. And my mom's in this room, cause I won't let her in and they're like freaking out. My mom is freaking out and she's like, look, that I need to get in there, I need to be with him and all this stuff. But the doctor tells her that she can't come in and that he's just talking to me about what he's about to do. So, in my head, I'm like, oh, <laughs> like I'm freaking out. I'm like, what is about, like what is going on? All this felt like, like minutes to me but like it was over a few hours so I'm laying there and I can remember the doctor comes in and he's like okay we're fixing to do this and then they try to I can I can remember them trying to like lift my arm over my head a little bit so they could get like more um more of a an access to my side I guess I remember waking up so apparently according to my mom the doctor came to her and said like he knew how scared I was and uh yeah so he he actually did put me under, like he put me to sleep, or at least like a, a lower dosage of going to like putting you to sleep. So I wake up and I'm like kind of freaking out and uh, there's this tube like literally this big just sticking out of my side and I'm like, what? And I'm just like, oh, it was insane. They, uh, it has, it's connected to this little box thing that has numbers on it where they can monitor it. And so this is how they found out that my lung had actually filled up with blood um, and the tube is how they would get that out. So, um, then they're telling me that they have to take me to a bigger hospital that's actually two hours away from where we are so they can do a surgery. So I'm, I'm like, what? So um, I talked to my mom and she's with me at this point. I have to get in another ambulance and they have to take me two hours. And I'm sitting here with this humongous tube in my side. And I'm like, oh my God, what, like, what is going on? Like, <laughs> like, do you, can you imagine like just out of nowhere, boom, 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 like all this, like, whoa. So, um, Caitlin and her boyfriend, now husband, this was actually their first date. <laughs> uh, the day before was their first date. So it's, it's kind of hard not to forget, but, um, so <laughs> they, her and her boyfriend at the time went to the the host home that I was at for the event and they got all my clothes and stuff because I literally left it all there and they explained to them what's going on. They come back and my mom and Caitlin and her boyfriend, now, they follow the ambulance for two hours um, and we get to this big hospital and we get there. I can remember them immediately bringing me to ICU, um, which is normally like where you go after surgery so like that they can monitor you like a closer look so um it's pretty insane and so they come in and they're doing all this blood work and all this stuff and then they tell me that i have to have the surgery and so my memory is a little blurry at this point because everything was happening so fast i can't quite remember how long it was going to take but i want to say that the surgery was in a couple of hours of me being there um they like explain to me what they're going to do. They're pretty much going to go in and they're going to, um, I think they changed the tube to a smaller one because this one, the first one was a really big. Um, and they, they did a surgery on the actual lung itself where they like went in and like scratched it up and then like stuck it to the, to my chest wall so it wouldn't be collapsed anymore. 
after the surgery, I woke up and it was pretty, pretty scary because normally when I wake up from anesthesia, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not a good anesthesia person. When I wake up, I'm freaking out or I'm crying. Most of the time I'm crying because that's just the type of person I am. I wake up crying. Um, I can't really help it, but that's just what happens. I'm in ICU for the next week and they're like doing all these tests and trying to figure out exactly what happened. It ended up that I had um, what they call blebs, B-L-E-B. Um, and it's a blister type thing that's on your lung and uh, apparently they can pop which would collapse the lung and then it's not common but for some reason mine bled into my lung which is where the blood came from yeah so I am at the hospital for two weeks at this like uh, for two weeks and uh, for the first the whole first week after the surgery I was in ICU and then they moved me to another to a regular hospital room for the next for the other week the nurses come in at the end of the week they're telling me that they can take the tube out and that i can go home if the lung reacts right when they take the tube out they do this thing where they had to like remove the stitch uh that's holding the tube in so she tells me to take a deep breath and she counts down three two one and just like snatches the tube out which that's how you have to do it the first time it didn't really hurt um, I don't really quite remember it, but I just kind of remember it feeling weird, like, whew. The first time it didn't really hurt when they pulled it out, no. Told me that, uh, I could go home because the lung reacted right to it, it stayed up, and, uh, to come back in two days for my follow-up appointment and make, they can make sure that everything was okay. So, we drive two hours back to my house, um, my mom and everybody, actually, I forgot to say this, but my dad, um, came home for this he he drove 16 hours he was actually working in Pennsylvania at the time he was there while we were in the hospital we drive home and we sleep a night and then we we spend the day and then we then we uh go back for the follow-up appointment we get back there and we take an x-ray and I'm like anyway so we take the x-ray and we're in the waiting room and they tell us um, we have to put you back in the hospital because the other side, my other lung was collapsed because of the same thing, just minus blood. It's so, like there wasn't any blood involved in this one. It was just uh, an air pocket, which uh, is a pneumothorax caused by the blips. So we have to do everything again. We have to have the same exact surgery. We have to do a tube and <sighs> yeah. So I'm in the hospital for two more weeks. I do the other surgery. Um, I'm not in ICU as long this time because they pretty much knew what was going on. So I was in ICU for probably two or three days. So they put me in a regular room again. They watch me for two weeks and they tell me that they can pull the tube out. They pulled the tube out of this side um, and I went home. And then I had to come back in two days for the follow-up appointment. And at this point, uh, I was worried. I was praying that it wouldn't happen again, that I was fine, and they said that everything looked fine, and yeah, so I got to go home. That was the first thing. That was the first time. I say first time, I say one time, because um, there was only one day in between the two visits, uh, so I was basically in the hospital for an entire month, like the entire month of February, and I got out sometime in March. Flash forward to um, July of 2017, so uh, we went to visit my dad in Pennsylvania for a month of June. So um, that was really amazing. We had a great time and we came back. We came like for the for the last week, I was like, okay, so I feel sore. Like my, my, my chest and my back and shoulders like this, where you feel it at, uh, was feeling sore, which was at normal at this point because um, of all the stuff they had done. They had really roughed up my inside and everything I did kind of made me feel a little sore, but I could tell it was a little different. So, um, we get home from Pennsylvania and uh, my mom had called the same hospital and they said, okay, we need you to come in so we can like check and make sure everything's okay. So we get to the hospital, we take an x-ray and they tell me that yet again, they had to put me in because somehow this lung, my right lung had collapsed for a second time. <sighs> we have to do the surgery, put another tube in and yeah, so this time I was only in the hospital for about a week because it wasn't as bad. Um, as the first time we get to the point where we can take the tube out and this time it hurt like a because um, when she when the when the lady pulled it out it was a different lady it was uh, it got caught on my skin when they pulled it out 
and it hurt so bad when they pulled it out the second time. So they pulled it out and the lung stayed up and uh, we got to come home and that was the last time I had any problems with my lungs. Um, um, to this day I have some like soreness kind of feeling but um, thankfully I have not had to go back to the hospital. I actually can show you guys scars because I have quite a few. So my first scar is like right here. That's from the bigger one. Um, right here is where the first one is. You can't really see it. Right there, that's how big the first one was. The second time, I don't know if you can see any of those, but like that's where smaller stuff was right here. There's one here and here. But I don't really know if you guys can see them. I need my lungs to stay up and they've been up for a year now. Um, well, this one's been up for two years, but this one has been up for a whole year now. Um, I know this because uh, I got reminded the other day when somebody was tweeting on Twitter, I think Demi actually tweeted that her song Sorry Not Sorry came out a year ago. And I was I can remember that song coming out the the day before I got my tube pulled out the second time, the like in uh, 2017. And I remember thinking, wow, Sorry Not Sorry, like, like, like it helped me like get like motivated again because I was pretty down. Being in the hospital is not fun. From current time, it had been about a year from the other day, like last week. And it reminded me and I was like, yeah, why don't I come tell you guys the story of what happened? There was a lot more details, like sometimes I had to have an oxygen mask and all this stuff, but I wanted to tell you guys a summarized story because I can, I made YouTube videos a while, like during this. I obviously didn't make any while I was in the hospital, but I made videos before this and I had attempted to explain what had happened, but I never really went into detail or told the story. So yeah, I wanted to tell you guys a story of how uh, my lungs collapsed and I had chest tubes and surgeries and all that fun stuff. But uh, yeah, I do have a P.O. Box if you guys would like to send me stuff because I'm going to do a P.O. Box opening video pretty soon. I've already caught a couple of things that you guys have sent me and I'm waiting to open them for the video. It's pretty hard to, to not because it's really cool because I want to see what you guys have sent me. But um, yeah, life has been crazy the past couple of weeks or months. Um, you guys have been showing me so much love and support and it's been insane to me. So thank you guys for being so sweet and amazing to me. I love you guys all so much. Also, yo, quick update on my merch. If you guys would like to check out any of my merch, you can use code SAWYER10 to get 10% off of your order when you check out. There will be a link in the description below. Uh, pretty soon my channel, my whole channel is going to be looking very different because I'm revamping it with everything. And I hope you guys are looking forward to that as much as I am because it's going to be pretty cool but yeah thank you guys so much for watching if you like to check out my social medias my instagram and twitter are right there and my snapchat is right there all right love you guys so much and be safe <laughs> bye